Let's take a second look at how to mill a part. So milling part two. There's a few things we need to know before we start milling this time. Let's make sure we know the codes that we're going to be using. For starters, we have a T1, which is going to select the tool that we're going to create. Then we need to have an M06, which is basically a tool exchange. So first we're going to select the tool, and then we're going to tell the machine to actually change to that tool itself. When we get ready to start milling our part, we have to tell the drill or the tool to go to position very quickly. So we're going to give that a G0, which is a fast traverse, to get into position quickly. After that, since our first cut is going to be a linear cut, we're going to turn to a G1, which is a linear traverse. So these are very typical that we're going to use, a G0 and a G1. Now for this design that we're going to work on, we're going to use a G92, which basically is going to move the origin of our coordinate system so that we can work relative to a new position that's convenient for us. Some other things we need to set are the feed rate, the spindle, and the rotation. We can do this with an F, an S, and an M3 code. The F is going to be followed by a few numbers such as an F200 that we're going to be using. The spindle speed we're going to be setting to 2500. Don't worry about actually knowing these speeds just yet because we'll cover that in another section. Just know that we will have to set the feed rate and the spindle as well as the rotation of the tool we're going to be using. Two more important things to note are the G2 code, which is to spin clockwise instead of a linear motion, and a G3, which is to go counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and take a look at the part that we're going to be working on. This is what we're going to try and create. It's going to be a 5 by 5 block. All these dimensions are in radius, I mean are in an inch, we have a radius of 1.5 on the top right hand corner right here. Then we have a moving down, a dimension of 0.5, another dimension of 1 for the radius, and then finally the last portion of 5 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at this location here. And we're going to move all the way around in a clockwise fashion. So let's look at what we're going to need for our coordinates. Again, this is our part. We're going to start in this upper corner here. And the tool that we're going to be using is going to have a diameter of 0.5. So we're going to have to take this in consideration as we're working on this part. Because what we're going to do is move this part around. It's going to continue to move around. And it's going to move the out around the outside of the part the entire time. Moving around, 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 like so. until it completes a full revolution around our part. So one important thing to remember is, let's take a look at this top right hand corner here. The radius that we had was 1.5. But if you notice, the radius from the center here that we're actually going to be traversing is not going to be 1.5. It's going to be 1.5 plus the radius of our actual tool. So we're going to have to make sure to add 1.5 plus 0.25 to each of our dimensions, which will give us a 1.75 for the actual length we're going to traverse of our arc. Well, not actually the length, but the radius of the arc we're going to traverse. So let's take a look at that first portion. We're going to move straight and then move down. This is our zero point here. So as we move straight over across, we're going to move a distance of 5 is the total distance but we're looking for is to subtract the 1.5 where we're going to stop for the center point of our circle. After that, it's going to traverse a larger arc than we're used to. And then finally move onward in a vertical direction. So just to write down a few notes for the code we're going to be using. This first portion is going to be a G1. This next portion here is going to be a G02 as we move around counterclockwise. But when we use this code here, we need two things to actually input. We need to input the final location that we're going to arrive at, which is here. And then we also need to know the distance from the center point of our arc from here to here. 
our final coordinates that we're going to use are going to be x 5.25 since we're going to arrive 0.25 distance away from our final piece of a distance 5 the y coordinate is going to be a negative 1.5 and then finally we need to have a distance 4 let me go ahead and erase this bottom portion here we're going to need to know the distance of our arc or the distance we are from the arc so notice in our x direction we have a zero distance so we label that with an i i will be a zero notice this is a capital i next we're going to use a j for the distance we are in the y direction now remember the distance we are is actually a negative portion because we're going to move down instead of up so we have to make sure to add that negative sign and that's going to be the 1.5 plus the distance of the radius of the circle so we're going to erase the 0.5 and we're going to place a 7.5 so that will be how we traverse around this section here with a g02 for our motion and this is what we're looking for right here let's go ahead and move on so so far we traveled straight across and we moved down from here now we need to continue from this point and move down to the point of our next arc. Remember, this radius here was a 0.5 r. I'll leave it r for radius. All these are in inches. And we need to traverse all the way down to this location here. So we need to make sure to turn the tool into a linear motion again. We'll do that with a, a g01 or a g1 will be the same. I'll make sure to fix my g so you know it's not a 6 that will be a G. Remember to find the last coordinate here we are moving all the way down to part 5 moving up a distance of 0.5 but we're keeping track of the center of our tool so the center of our tool will arrive here in the circle with the radius of 0.25 so we're going to actually move down to a coordinate of Y negative 4.75 and then moving on to the next portion so far we moved straight, we moved down here, and now we're at this location here. We need to move inward around this arc, all the way down to the final position here, so we can continue on moving. First, we need to specify the rotation we're going to be doing, so get out of linear mode, which is a G03. And then we need the final X, the final Y, and we need an I and a J for our next coordinates. So remember, this X and Y is going to be the final location here that we're going to be moving to. And the I and J here is going to be the distance from here to the center of our arc. So basically this point here. And it extends to there. That's the arc we're going to be sweeping. Notice it's smaller than the actual arc of our piece. And above, the arc that we traversed was actually larger than our actual piece. So our final x is going to be 4.75. Remember to keep in accordance to our radius we're using for our tool. Our y is going to be a negative 5.25. Our i is going to be a 0.25. And our j is going to be a negative 0.75. Once we're done with that, we need to go back into our linear motion. So again, we've moved straight. We've traversed around this corner, we've come down, we've traversed again, and now we're at this location needing to move over towards the left. First thing we need to do is go back into linear mode, a G1, and then specify the distance that we're going to be moving to, or the location, which is going to be simply an X1, will be right below the Y coordinate. Or I should say, the Y coordinate is not going to change for this motion here, so we're only dictating the X coordinate of motion. After that, just like before, we moved across, moved down, moved down, moved around, moved over here, and now we need to do the final piece here, which again is another rotation. Now we specify that with the G02, so we have a rotation. We need an X, a Y, an I, and a J. I'll go ahead and box those. Again, the X and Y is going to be the final position. The I and J 
is going to be the distance to the arc that we're going to be moving around. This distance here and here. So here's the value we're going to be using. This is going to be our final position as well as the arc moving around. And actually, I identified the wrong location. This location is going to be the final location here that we're going to be using. You can go ahead and erase this portion here. This will appear in the top right hand corner is where we're going to end at. And finally, the last bits of code we're going to use are to turn it back into linear mode. And we're going to reset to the position of y.25 without moving along the x-axis. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and go back to g0. And we will disengage from our part and move upward with a z2. Now let's go ahead and actually input this code and see what it looks like. 